You're listening to the Go Getter Podcast. I'm your host, Candice Janae. I'm a digital marketing and automation strategist and business coach. I'm the CEO and founder of Epic Fab Girl, where we help Christian women entrepreneurs market and scale their service-based businesses beyond six figures as they grow deeper in their faith. So whether you're a coach, speaker, or a service provider, this podcast will drop gems, bringing you tips, strategies, and stories from experts to help you take your life, business, and relationship with God to the next level. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. I'm your host, Candice Janae, and we are back with another amazing episode with a woman entrepreneur of faith who has built her business to six figures. Now, the person that is coming on today, I'm so excited about her. Her name is Tyler Clark. She is an incredible artist that has built her business to six figures and beyond. And I'm just so excited about her personal story and journey, not just because I've seen her work and content online. She's made art for people like Quavo and Don Hanna. She's made so much incredible work. She's even, I know she met Beyonce. She's going to have to tell us about that, or at least uh, Miss Tina Knowles. Um, She's done so many incredible things in the space of art. And when I tell y'all, like this episode is going to be amazing. One thing I love about her is that she is faith-based, but I've also known her for years. We actually went to high school together. So it has been so incredible to see her journey and her growth. And so we are going to bring up Tyler Clark, And literally, we are so excited to have you here today, Tyler. Welcome to the Go-Getter Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And my art is right behind Candice, so. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Like, everybody, that's so funny because I, I have... I have had these staples up for a while. I switched these two out recently, but um, love, love, love your art. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your business for those who are new to you. Tell us a little bit about your business and kind of how you got started in entrepreneurship. Yeah, so I'm Tyler Clark. My business is inspired by Tyler and I'm a 3D mixed media hair artist. So I add synthetic hair, fabric, jewelry, really any material that can make my art complete, um, I add to my paintings. And that's what I'm known for. I'm known as a hair artist. I studied math and mechanical engineering in college and art was something that was therapeutic for me. And it was something that I was eventually able to turn into a business and really scale it up and just really figure out that balance between entrepreneurship, corporate America. And I'm just really excited to continue to evolve. I love this so much because it has just been so incredible to watch your journey. Like, I feel like even what you said, like you have a background in mechanical engineering, you studied different things in college, and then you deviated off of that path. And I think it, for me, that that resonates a ton because I also studied mechanical engineering at undergrad, and now I'm doing nothing that has to do anything with engineering. And so I, I think the lesson that can be learned, even just from your your what you've already said is that we should be okay with the pivots. We should be okay when God redirects us into a different space that might not look like what we anticipated. And so I would love for you to share your journey of transitioning off of your corporate job. I think about that one time that we landed in, we were in Amsterdam randomly at the same time. And you were in such a pivotal moment, kind of trying to make a decision about what was next. I would love just to hear a little bit more about like, your journey of, you know, going from a corporate job and then kind of making a decision to actually quit that job and become a full-time entrepreneur. Yes. I loved how we were in Amsterdam at the same time, especially because I was there for work and like, it was just nice to be able to meet and connect. And I feel like that was such a powerful moment. So my journey is like very interesting. And so, you know, even pivoting into wanting to pursue art, it was never something that I really saw as a financially stable career path. And I think a lot of times we'll pigeonhole ourselves because of what society will say is the best path to success. But as a believer, we have to understand that like God kind of does things in a way that may not be the norm. (laughs) And so I feel like that's what happened with me. So pivoting into art, it was something that was therapeutic for me. Um, So once I graduated from college, I knew I would have more capacity to spend time on my art. 
So I moved back home to Chicago and I was working at United Airlines. And so I would be working all day as an analyst and then painting all night as an artist. And eventually I had the idea to add hair to my art and it went viral. So this entire time I was just like building both, like, you know, growing up the corporate ladder and then also having these really amazing big moments, like being at Miss Tina Knowles Wearable Art Gala, meeting Saweetie, doing the piece for Quavo, but then going back to a cubicle. And I really struggled with that because it's like, I know that I have something so big and powerful, but like, God, why am I going back to a cubicle? But I needed that security at that time. And so fast forward, there's a pandemic and nobody was trying to fly because of the safety concerns. And so the airline industry was really suffering. And essentially uh, I was offered a voluntary separation package. Like they offered us this option to leave with some benefits. And I had to make a decision, you know, do I stay in a life that is comfortable or do I chase after the life of my dreams? And it was a very difficult decision, but I ultimately decided to um, bet on God. And so I took that leap of faith. I did art Um, full time. And my brand just like skyrocketed to a point where I really could not keep up with the demand of my art. My art was being sold globally. And so it was like a really big adjustment. But I was able to do so much during that time and learn so much about entrepreneurship because I didn't really have that business background. And then what's interesting now is, you know, when the world was like on the shutdown mode, a lot of people were in their house, wanted to like do like, you know, new home decor, everybody's on their phone. Social media marketing was a lot different at that time. So I was experiencing so much success to the point where I might've been a little bit arrogant about it, honestly. Like I may not have like shown that, but in my heart, I was like, oh, like nothing can stop me. And although I like give, give the credit to God, it was like a little bit of me that felt almost like entitled to that success. And I don't know if I like, maybe you'll call it like an idol or something like that. But God checked me (laughs) real big to where my entire business just changed. Like where I was getting so many sales and I couldn't keep up with the demand, it just stopped. As soon as the world opens back up, everybody's finances are, have been spent differently. Like, you know, we're catching up on events, weddings, parties, celebrations, travel, and then also inflation. Like the cost of everything has gone up so much and people aren't spending as much time on their phones and in the house. Like people want to live and have real experiences. And I noticed a big drop in my business. And so I was struggling and trying to do the same things that got me to that point of success. And it just was not working. And so I had to make another pivotal decision. I decided to go back to United where I was when I left that same team. And I took a demotion coming back. And so I feel like my ego was shot. But I feel like God like was telling me, like, you need some stability right now. And I think I was moving in my business from the wrong space. It wasn't authentic anymore. It was almost like this desperate space of like, if I don't move this art, I'm not going to pay my bills and I'm going in debt. And so I just didn't want to continue to be that way. And so ultimately I went back to United and as soon as I did, I feel like God started blessing me with really big partnerships. So my brand started to turn from, you know, selling a painting or an accessory item, a print to bigger partnership deals. And so I'm still figuring this thing out and the landscape is continuing to change, but it it is so important to pivot even when it's uncomfortable because it might actually bless you. Oh, Tyler. First of all, thank you for being so vulnerable. Like this has been, just hearing all of the elements of your story has been such a blessing because I think sometimes there's this shame that people feel about going back to corporate or transitioning into a certain space. And also, thank you just for being honest about like, in your heart, like where you were at. Um, Because I think sometimes we can get and achieve all the success. And we're like, Oh, I'm good. And then God is like, all right, well, this comes from me and I can take it away too. And so I'm just, I'm just really incredibly encouraged by you just sharing that piece of your story. But one of the things that you talked about was like, you had to learn a lot about entrepreneurship, even though you didn't have an entrepreneurial background. So I would love to know, like, what were some of those things, like those big lessons that you had to learn that helped you? Like, what what were some of those things that you wish you knew better or that you wish you knew when you were like going into entrepreneurship? Yeah, I wish I understood that my path does not have to move at the speed that I think like, um, you know, social norms will say like, oh, you need to scale, you need to grow, you need to do all this. And it's like, no, actually, I don't just like 
that my path can move at a different rate than what might be socially acceptable for success. A lot of times I would do these programs and have these mentors and it's, you know, about how to manage the scale and like, what do I do to keep this momentum and all that? But it's like, my business was scaling faster than I had the means to support. And ultimately everything crashed and crumbled down. And I experienced a lot of trauma in in my business from, you know, how do I keep up with this? How do I sustain it at a certain point? Because there's, a, you know, the seasonality and the cycles of business, like you might be up in one season and down in the next. And like, how do you navigate that? Making sure that you have like the forecasting of your finances, the budget around it so that you know, okay, hey, I might be doing well right here, but let me make sure that I actually save that because on average for a year, I can expect to see this. So if I have a lower month, it's not as much pressure or like, I can't just lose my mind and think, oh, because I got to this point, it's just going to go up continuously. And so I think if I could have understood that I could have slowed down and just found something that was healthy for me, that would have been good. And then also it's hard to trust people in business. And so, you know, I had someone that was helping me manufacture some of my 3D hair prints and that relationship was just very unhealthy and ultimately had a really negative impact on my business and how I had to kind of like start over. Man, there are so many moments in entrepreneurship that come unexpected that really make you be like, why am I doing this? <laughs> because I feel like, you know, one of the things and one of my visions for even the Go-Getter podcast has always been to share the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Like we can see the amazing moments on Instagram when you're, you know, at the, I think like, do you be going to the BET Awards or did I make that up? Yes. Okay. So seeing all those amazing moments and are like, wow, it's so incredible. But it's like, okay, what happens when someone, you know, in business behind the scenes is, is you know, the business relationship goes sour and like you have to navigate that, but still meet the demand of what your clients are looking for. And so thank you for being honest. And, and I hope that you guys that are listening can really understand that like, y'all, entrepreneurship is not easy. Like it just, there's no parts of it that are, I mean, there are parts that will come with ease, but we should expect opposition and we should expect, you know, figuring out how to sort things out. Um, Because even these large corporations, they have to do it. When the economy shifts, they have to shift. When the economy shifts, we have to shift as well. If you've learned anything from this podcast, I know you're gonna love the Go-Getter Confidential Click at gogettermembership.com. It's a global membership community for Christian women entrepreneurs to connect, build wildly profitable service-based businesses and grow their faith. So whether you're just getting started with an idea or you already have an established brand and you wanna lay the foundation for six-figure income, the Go-Getter membership is just what you need. With expert masterclasses, monthly prayer, and tons of courses and downloads, your business will be better because of it. Entrepreneurship isn't easy, but this community will help you go from feeling stuck to clear and motivated. Join today at gogettermembership.com and save 50% off your first three months when you use code podcast at checkout. We'll see you inside. And so one of the things I want to go back to, because I feel like we attract a lot of women who have like corporate jobs and are kind of navigating running a business that's a side hustle, that's a significant side hustle, but also working in a corporate position. So what advice do you have for those who want a better balance, like both of them and like prioritizing both of them? I'd love to know if you have like support on your team, like, is it just you or do you get support from other people? Does that make the process easier? I'd love to know how you're kind of navigating that. Yeah, I think first it's to just give yourself grace and understand that where you are is just fine and not to put this unnecessary pressure on yourself. I think I put too much on, oh, I'm a full-time artist when it's not, that's not what it's all about. It's about the impact that I can give and, and there's so much more to it, but I don't do it alone. And I realized that I needed help. And so I have an assistant that helps me, like whether it's with in-person events or not, like I have someone that can help me with marketing when I need help with that, or just like if it's packaging art or doing that type of stuff. So I can't do it all on my own, but it is also kind of difficult to scale up 
and like get somebody else to understand your mind and how you would do things. So like making sure that you have your processes documented so that if you do hire someone that you already have your systems in place. So it's not like they have to know your mind and like guess how you would think. Cause I was making that mistake a lot, but I think a lot of it really just comes down to like, okay, I have this job. I understand why I'm here. You know, like whether it's health insurance, whether it's just having that consistent paycheck or for me, having my corporate job actually helps me to perform better in my business because it keeps me sharp. It keeps me into that administrative task, which I do not personally like. Um, and when I'm overwhelmed or kind of booked in, then I don't really have a lot of time to play. So it kind of forces me to do things and be more efficient. But you have to know yourself and like, don't feel bad about it. And you just have to carve out the time. Like if you want to grow both, you can do both. But also understand that you know, you can kind of control some of that pace. Like you don't have to push yourself past what you're comfortable with. And I had to understand that like, sometimes I'm not in a season where I want to paint. And sometimes I am, and I have to be able to listen to my body. And I call it like the pace of grace, like kind of knowing when to speed up and knowing when to slow down and just like giving yourself that grace along the way. Because uh, when I'm moving and like producing, sometimes I feel like, okay, yeah, I'm a better person because look what I'm doing. But then when I'm resting or when things are slower, it's almost like, oh man, like I'm not this person that I claim to be. I can't produce, like I'm not as good, but that's not true because you need that time to reset. You need that time to just refocus and truly stay authentic. And so I'm not the type that's just going to say like work, 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 because sometimes we need to rest. And I just feel like it's just so normal to overwork ourselves and not to actually enjoy life or listen to our bodies. Oh, that right there is so good. And I think about how that's like a biblical principle of like resting. And it's one of the things that I think a lot of people miss in the Bible because everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't steal or you shouldn't cheat or you shouldn't lie. But let's talk about the fact that G like God literally rested on the seventh day and he told us to honor the Sabbath. And a lot of people don't do that. Like they just, they work through the Sabbath. They're, they're like, you know, and one of the things that I have learned for me personally, once I made the commitment to start honoring the Sabbath and really like not work and like not do anything work related on the Sabbath, man, my life changed, right? Because if we're on go, 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 go every day, and we never get an opportunity to rest, then we end up being burnt out. And then, you know, the, our business and our bank account reflects that. And, but if you give yourself time to like build and rest, and also not just in the Sabbath, but in other areas, like if you're always on the go, like I'm the type of person, I'm always on the go. However, comma, I got to build in some of the travel or times where I'm like, no, nobody can plan anything on my schedule. I'm just going to sit down. Right. And like you said, listening to your body is so, so important. So I want to hear a little bit about like your actual journey to making your first six figures. Our audience, we have people who are service-based, so coaches, services, and like speakers. So anybody that sells like, you know, a service. And I think about the work that you do, even though it's kind of like e-commerce it also is service-based because it's like you're literally creating art and these big pictures and like selling them and so I would just love to hear like how you made your first six figures and I really want to dig into how you were able to price your art at a premium price especially with you know some of the incredible large pieces of art that you were doing yeah so as far as getting to the first six figures I honestly just kept showing up online and like, don't get me twisted right now. I'm taking a break from social media because I need to get my mind right. So you have to still listen to yourself and listen to your heart. But at that time I was just very on fire and wanting to change the narrative of what was on my timeline. Cause this is 2020. So all I was seeing on my timeline is like just police brutality. And that was like breaking my heart. And I'm like, no, like somebody on my timeline needs to see something from like a big sister, something that's like godly inspiration and another thing to just like shake up the dynamic of what's on the timeline right now. And so around that time, it's like everybody wants to invest in black businesses. And so it was very easy for me to get those sales because at that time, like people weren't very familiar with my art. They really were excited about, you know, having art with hair and just like really collecting my work, given, you know, certain people that, you know, collect my art in the industry. 
And so it was really easy to get the sale. It was just a lot to produce the product. And at that time, like my art was selling for pretty cheap. So like in 2020, like I would do um, these 3D hair prints. So it's a print of my work and I'll add the hair on. I was selling those for like $150 for a 16 by 20 size. So it's a little bit smaller than this. And right now I sell those for $1,000. Now, when I first jumped up to that $1,000 point, I was selling them so fast because the demand was that high. Now they don't sell that fast anymore, but that's the price of my work. I'm not going back down on my price point. So if that means I'm going to corporate, then I'm going to corporate. <laughs> Listen, I know that's right. Can you briefly talk about what was the mindset of raising your price from 150 to 1000 Like, what did you have to talk yourself through? Because I feel like so many women talk themselves out of, you know, making more money. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it was interesting. Like, I scaled it up uh, over time. So it didn't just go, you know, to 1000 overnight. But for me, I was tired of making them. And especially after everything kind of came crumbling down in my business, that load was back on me. I didn't like making them. I feel like I didn't have that creativity anymore. It was just a process that I just didn't appreciate. And I was like, look, I have financial stability right now. I don't have to do this. So if I'm going to do something that I actually don't want to do, I need to be compensated properly. And so I think that helps me too. It's like, okay, my art doesn't expire I can make it and it can stay here and I can sell it five years from now and still make money off of it. So I didn't want to have that like, oh, I'm just doing this because people want it. Like I wanted to be in control of my business because this is still my passion. So that really did help me. And then also the more people I got collecting my work, the more I knew the value it was going up. So I needed to make sure that I was actually available for those high ticket items. So whether it's a $5,000 piece, a $10,000 piece, or a $3,000 piece, I needed to be available for that because I was going to take a lot of my time, like my creative capacity. And I didn't want to be spending that up on things that was only going to give me like a lower price point. And so I needed to understand like the sacrifice essentially of creating art for someone. Yeah. As you're talking about this, I would love to hear what advice you would have for those who run a creative business. Because not everybody, like you, you exist in a very unique market, right? It's, it requires your art. It requires your talent. It requires creativity. And, but you also got to get to the bag, right? Like if you want to keep running the business. Um, so what advice do you have for those who are running like creative businesses and like how to navigate that space? I know you talked a little bit about, you know, sometimes when you like figuring out when you want to paint versus when you don't. So what are some of the things that you would tell someone who is running a creative company? Yeah, I would say you need to have boundaries around what projects you take and what projects you don't. Um, there are certain projects that I accepted that just drained me creatively. And it just kind of took my capacity from creating for myself. And I find when I'm doing stuff that's like from my heart, it's a lot more successful and it's received in a very different way. So I think that's one thing, making sure that you have like that reserve for your baby and for like your passion. Um, and then outside of that, like if you have the energy to like get out and do stuff, you have to like really lean into that. So in the creative space, it's very helpful to get out and get in front of audiences, like to do shows and events so that you can meet people. And so people can, you know, buy your work. And it's also important to have like a, a price range so that someone who maybe can't afford your thousand dollar piece or however high they can still leave with a print or an accessory or something if you're comfortable with having reproductions of your art. But I feel like having that price range allows me to make thousands of dollars just off of selling $20, $30 prints because I'm able to understand that I have an audience that is high ticket collectors that want this big custom art. And then I also have grandparents, parents, and like youth who just want the representation. So I think you have to really understand like how you can achieve that goal and really showing up for yourself. Yeah, this is so I'm, I'm like, I'm so excited hearing this because I know there's going to be someone who hears this, that this was just for them, right? Like they're literally running a creative company and they're like, ah, oh, man, nobody's talking about this. So I'm glad that um, you shared that. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about is how you mentioned that 
you started leveraging partnerships in your business. Can you talk to us about some of the brands that you've partnered with, as well as like kind of how you started going about, like, how does that add revenue to your business? Yeah, the partnerships have been like really good, um, especially when it's like big companies because they actually have the budget and, you know, want to invest it in, you know, black women and me, I guess, you know, so, so the interesting thing is I actually haven't like sought after these partnerships on my own. These are things that have organically come from to me. And in the future, I want to start being more proactive. So that's something that I'm working towards. But I did a, a partnership with MasterCard um, where I only had six weeks to create 23 portraits <laughs> that had to get to New York. And they ended up being presented at the Apollo Theater. And I was the keynote speaker and presented by Jennifer Hudson, which I was like, how does that happen? I don't know. <laughs> but they Nothing but God. <laughs> okay. Literally, they paid me and they paid me well. And let me explain too. When I got the opportunity to do that, I was actually in LA on this show called Instant Influencer. And I had just got kicked off the show. But in my inbox, I have this opportunity to make a whole lot of money and to really push myself. And so I feel like God will has a way of, you know, mending that brokenness, right? And I'm even saying that to myself. And it applies to so many areas of our lives where we might be hurt in one area and have to understand that like, if God's saying no to that, then he's saying yes to something better. And that's what I've been experiencing. But that MasterCard project has been great. And it's something that has continued on. I was able to get a grant. And then I also have partnered with Walmart. I was on a a national commercial campaign with them last year and they paid me a lot of money for that project. And then they also wanted one of my paintings. So they are a collector of my work as well. And um, I would say those are two of like some of my bigger partnerships that I've had. And it has really changed the game. And didn't you do something that, was it Nordstrom? Did I make that up? Yeah. So Nordstrom's as well. So they uh, did like a black business pop-up and they invited me to come and sell my work, which was really cool. And I actually did very well there because I do have higher price point items. And so that was an audience that really was able to support me like kind of through the full range. So some people just were like, oh, like you're a black woman. I want to buy from you just because they might've just bought one thing or like, no, I want this art up. And so it was really a good audience for me. And then they also had me come back this month to display my art for black history month. And I was also able to do a pop-up event there, but they've been like really supportive. And so it's these opportunities to truly like get out there and these partnerships, they're able to like provide a different type of a platform. So not only are they sharing it on their social media, but they're literally, literally giving me access to their customers and I don't have to pay them anything to be there. I would love this so much. Like for those of y'all who are listening, this is your sign that if you literally, like the Bible says your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. I feel like this is literally that in action, right? Like oh, you said these opportunities came to you. These are brands that we all know and love. And the fact that they can seek you out and say, hey, come on in. And I think about the ease of it, right? Like instead of having to like hustle, hustle, hustle and get all these clients, you can connect with corporate partners and corporate clients that are willing to support the work that you're doing. So that is so, so exciting. So this has been so, so incredible. One of the questions I love to ask is, what do you tell the woman who's afraid of going after her next big thing? You know, I think we all experience fear sometimes, but your faith has to be greater than that. I've had so many opportunities that just really blow my mind, whether it's Miss Lauren Hill collecting my work now, whether it's Taraji P. Henson, Burn a Boy, like I could not have imagined like that being what my art became. Like, so when I first started painting nature scenes to now being collected by well-known people and just the evolution of it all, it's not necessarily about where you start. It's about the fact that you start and you understand that it can grow and evolve from there. So it's okay to be afraid, but just continue at it. And then the more you do, the more that you'll be confident. And I really fight to have confidence in my life so that I don't have to personally be confident in my abilities. I'm confident in what God can do in my life. Man, so, so good. I, I'm honestly so proud of you. And I'm just, your story is so encouraging and inspiring, which is so cool that that's a part of your brand name anyways. But I would love to have you share with us like where 
we can stay connected with you online and all of the things. Yeah. So uh, you can find me on social media at inspirebytyler.com. That's I-N-S-P-I-R-E-B-Y-T-Y-L-E-R. So that's my website. That's my social media. That's everything. And And y'all better go get you some art, okay? Because when I say I be making videos and reels on Instagram and everybody's favorite question is, where'd you get that art? I'm always like tagging Tyler, like, please, like, go get you some art right? Add a little spice to your house. Um, But thank you so much. (laughs) No. And and it's so cool to think about like your deep impact, right? Like you have art like in homes across the globe. Like that's major. That's incredible. All because you started painting and doing what God told you to do. So that's why I'm like, it's so inspiring. And to see what it has done and the rooms that, you know, God has opened up for you, like, and this is just the beginning. Like that's that's the crazy yeah. part, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, so I love to see it. And for those who don't know, she's also sisters with Leah's Essence, if you guys know her on YouTube. And it's just always so exciting to see just God doing amazing things in both of your lives. So thank you so much for joining us today for the Go Get It podcast. We you have been such a joy, Tyler. So thank you. And I wish you the best with all your work in the way. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Of course. Well, y'all, listen, this episode was something different, okay? It was so, so good. And I just look forward to you guys still staying connected with us. As always, we love you. Thank you for tuning in. And if this episode really blessed you in any capacity, just share it with someone who you know it could either inspire or who you're like, girl, you got to hear what she said about X, Y, Z. Like literally send them that episode. But as always, we love you. We're praying for you. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Go-Getter Podcast. If you love this conversation, you're going to love the panels and workshops that are at Go-Getter Conference. It's our premier event of the year and it happens annually. It's gonna help you market and monetize your God-given ideas and connect with women from across the globe. Head over to gogetterconference.com to check it out right now. And just for staying until the end of this episode, we have a special gift for you, the Go-Getter Plan and Profit Workbook. This workbook is gonna help you plan your income for the year. So head to gogetterpodcast.com forward slash plan and profit to get your copy. And don't forget to drop a five-star review if you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you on the next episode of the Go-Getter Podcast.